Over 150 artists took part in this pixel art challenge. 30 days and 30 different prompts, all in a fantasy adventure theme. The first 25 prompts are in a 24 pixel size, then the difficulty steps up to a 32 pixel size, with the final prompt in the largest 48 pixel size. All of this using only these three colors. This is September. It's called September because the prompts are released in September, but you can do it anytime. And you can end up with an awesome sheet of pixel art, just like we did last year, which had the theme animals. Quick, pause the video to get an animal and let me know which one you got in the comments. So in this video, I'm gonna be sharing how I did mine and what I learned. I also went through every single entry so I could show them throughout this video. I do apologize if I missed any, but you can check out the hashtag September tag on social media if you wanna look through all the entries there. So let's break down how I did mine. Settling on a style was a lot more difficult than I first thought. A light background with dark outlines and red for the silhouette, or no outlines and black for the shadow. Dark background with dark shadow. Dark background with black and white outlines. Red background with... There are so many approaches with just three colors. As we can see here from some community entries. We had some very consistent styles and also a mix of styles in one sheet too. Nice work everyone. I eventually decided to go with the dark background, using the same dark colour as the shadow, and the red and white as object colours, with the white as highlights. This approach, along with the use of dithering in the shadows, I thought looked quite gritty and suited a dungeon adventure well. I was also using no outlines and trying to show a more organic nature to each of the items by using unique angles. But I'm not fully sure if that helped or hindered the consistency of the sheet. My plan for this was to sketch them all out at first and then go back and clean them up. And I wasn't sticking to one per day either. Even though there are 30 prompts for 30 days, you can do them whenever you want in whatever order you want. You can do two a day, five a day, start from the end, start from the middle or even speed run it as we got here from Wandering Ash, who finished within the first day. How awesome is that? I really wasn't happy with how this was turning out. It just felt very uninspired and I didn't really enjoy working in this style. So I took a little break and didn't work on it for a while. Until I had an idea. I should make it lumber inspired. You know, the little, little dwarf from past videos. I had an idea to turn this into a game. No spoilers though, I'm gonna save that for another video, but here's a quick mock-up I did as a teaser. From making this, I decided that I needed a light background. So my style approach changed. I started using the dark colors as an outline and a shadow, the pinky red as object colors and shadow, and the white as object colors or highlights, and obviously, the background. I wanted to use outlines because I felt they would stand out better, which is going to be really important for the game. And I just like the way it looks. There's so much you can do with outlines. You can add color to them or break them to make an object appear softer or give an indication of the light source. You can also add anti-aliasing to soften some of those sharp edges. If you want to learn more about the basics of pixel art, check out this video. And the challenge isn't just for pros either. We had complete beginners who had only been doing pixel art for a couple of days or weeks to more experienced artists who had been doing it for years. Everyone was supporting each other and that was so awesome to see. To keep the style consistent, I'm trying to keep the light source from the top, which helped inform some of the outlines too, where I could replace the black with red or break it completely when I wanted it to appear lighter from above. You might notice from watching that my first ideas rarely make it and the designs go through an evolution where I'm pushing and pulling the shapes, sculpting and carving away until I get something I'm more happy with. When I'm doing this, I'm also trying to fill the allotted canvas size to keep the variations in size between the prompts to a minimum. This should make the entire sheet appear more consistent overall. So a lot of the prompts have these squished or chunky proportions which was intentional. Consistent or consistently inconsistent. There were artists who tried to do the same style throughout and others who experimented with each prompt. It's really up to you what you decide to do. Sometimes I even roughly sketched out the ideas in a lined notepad to get an idea of what they might look like. Just keeping it rough and exploring different ideas and shapes that I could use. Making something readable and appealing out of simple shapes looks easy, but it's actually really difficult. And when I was getting carried away, introducing too many angles, deviating from the intended style, I found what helped the most was starting again, forcing myself to think more simply using basic shapes for the silhouette. And once I was happy with that basic shape, I could then add little bits of interest throughout. You know, one or two pixels off set or lines in different directions and angles can really add a lot, especially when you're working in small sizes. The difficulty in this style really comes from maintaining a balance between the simple and readable silhouettes and the interesting and unique features. If you took part in September, let us know in the comments what was most challenging about your entry and the style that you decided to go for. And if you see your work in this video, make sure you timestamp it. 
so most of the items are in a front view with some slight angles but all of the characters are in a three quarter view this was a decision i made when tackling the npc because i knew there were a lot of characters coming up and i wanted to make sure i had the same approach for all of them again for consistency also the rabbit is in three quarters which really helped me make that decision and is one of my favorites five points to anyone who leaves a comment letting me know where it's from let's take a look at some of the awesome community pets we got some spiders dogs pigs owls polar bears chameleons oh my did anyone do a snail can you see a snail let me know if you spot a snail in this video the combination of simple shapes and outlines lends itself really well to a fun cartoony style which i definitely prefer working in compared to a more gritty and realistic style and while i was getting more comfortable working in this style as i went through the prompts it can still be really hard to get it right i think you could see that well from the skeleton evolution where it started off with a more realistic approach complex shapes shadows and design and while it doesn't look bad it doesn't match the same simple style that the other entries had i find it's much easier to overcomplicate and add things than it is to simplify and take away but it's really satisfying when I solve that puzzle of how to show something in its most basic shapes. With the final results often looking quite unique because it's solely your interpretation of the subject and not just a direct copy of a reference. Speaking of unique, look at this community work. It took me so long to go through all of the entries, download them, resize them and label them. But at the same time, it was such a pleasure to check them all out and see how creative everyone had been. This time, instead of sketching them all out and then cleaning them up afterwards, I worked on one at a time. This approach helped a lot because I was forcing myself to finish one or at least be happy with it before moving on to the next one. And instead of having 20 unfinished pieces that needed cleaning up, which felt really overwhelming, checking them off one by one gave me a nice sense of progression, which was key to staying motivated throughout. I did go back and change a couple too when I spotted something off or there was something I wanted to try, but because I'd spent so much time refining them already, it wasn't really a big deal. So doing one a day worked out well for me in the end, but how did you approach your entry? What was your process? Again, let us know in the comments how you tackled your entry. And don't forget to timestamp your work when you see it. Now it's time for the big four. These next four are in a 32 pixel size. And as the prompts suggest, this is your adventure party. Warrior, Hunter, Rogue, and Mage. I had a really difficult time imagining what the characters looked like at first. And after some attempts, I realized I needed some more context. Like the NPC is a tavern bartender and the fairy is cheeky and leads you towards the portal. Context is important to give the characters a fitting appearance and personality. So I spent some time exploring and writing out the background to these characters. And ultimately, I ended up writing out the the whole timeline for the Lumberverse story. But no spoilers, we will get onto that someday. After this, I had a much better idea who those characters were and I could start figuring out how to get them onto the page. I originally struggled with finding a pose that was interesting. It's a larger canvas size and in my mind that meant they need to be more epic. But really what I found was keeping them simple like the rest of the pieces was more important. So instead of imagining epic portraits, I just kept them within the already established style, which was actually quite hard because there were more pixels. And with that, more opportunities to add detail sometimes inappropriately. But with some pushing and pulling, I got there in the end and I'm really happy with how they turned out. Because they're part of a larger and as of yet untold story, I wanted to keep them mysterious. So the warrior is covered up by a giant suit of armor. The hunter is concealed with a giant bear skin. The rogue is hooded in the shadows and the mage is hidden underneath a big wizard hat. You can speculate as much as you like in the comments as to their story, but any accurate guesses will be deleted. You will be banned and my lawyers will be in touch. Just kidding. But if your idea is good, I might just steal it. It can be really tough when moving up to a larger size to work in, but everyone absolutely killed it. Check out the variety in party members and the bosses as well. Super cool. And finally, it was on to the biggest, the boss. It had to be the dragon. I again struggled with whether or not I should diverge from the original style and try something more epic. But after sketching out some ideas, I really liked the personality of this one which fit the original style as well. So double bonus. I thought it had a lot of character. I love how confident it looks. So I wanted to get something similar across in my final piece too, since I guess this is the first introduction of the famous dragon that burnt down Lumber's house. It was actually quite simple to get this down since the sketch was quite a good reference point. And because I had a lot of pixels to work with in this size, I could more easily replicate that sketch instead of making sacrifices in shape and silhouette, which is more common when you're working in a smaller size. Like I said before, sometimes working in larger sizes can lead to adding inappropriate amounts of detail. So I don't think working larger is easier. I think I just had a good handle of the style at this point and I could control the pixels to end up with a fire breathing dragon in the same style. So that's my finished piece. Let me know which one of these is your favorite in the comments. 
I think mine has to be this terrible trio. I could just imagine them getting into all sorts of mischief together. Perhaps a Lumberverse spin-off series is needed at some point. I think I'll call them Bones, Gobby and Mo. And if that wasn't enough, we even got some bonus entries. Here you can see a few colour variations where people tried out their own colour palettes. Some went for very dungeon-like colours like Bess, and I think my favourites have to be the green ones. I just love green. Thantropy even used a cool CRT filter for theirs, which I really like the look of. Super retro looking. We even got a whole bunch of animated entries this year. Some animated the full sheet, and others just a couple of entries. I apologise that I couldn't highlight everyone's art here, there was just so many and it would take so long, but I was absolutely blown away by the entries this year. I love how creative people got with this, some making them link or putting in full stories like Solomon did here. The amount of skill and patience it takes to animate every single entry is super impressive. I don't think I'd have the patience to animate my full entry, so props to everyone that went that extra mile. And to finish it off, I wanted to showcase these entries for trying something different with the format. Aliokas created a huge background for theirs, which put each prompt into an appropriate setting. Super cool. Izator had a full Nautilus themed entry with a really creative layout. Blue created a full animation with dialogue, scenes, battle scenes. So great. No spoilers, go check out that full video. And last but not least, Monster Demon created a full interactive version of their entry. This is absolutely nuts and really creative. Links to these will be in the description for you to check out. I hope everyone enjoyed taking part in the challenge. If you've seen your work in this video, please timestamp it and leave a link to your socials in the comments so the whole community can support each other. And if you're watching this and wondering how you can take part, well, you can do it anytime. All the resources you need to get started are on social media or Discord. Thank you so much everyone for making this such a fun experience.